and welcome everybody to this video. Today I'm going to talk about Free Eye Atlas and I'm out and about today so I'm just going to have a little walk and talk because you know I'm always in front of the computers, always editing, doing bits and pieces so I just thought it'd be nice to kind of do something a little bit different out and about. Comet Free Eye Atlas is an interstellar comet apparently this is the way nasa first saw it they saw it as they said it was a comet obviously they're not going to say it's something else but as time's progressed it's changed shape it's changed color it's changed direction and it's very very bizarre what is happening remote viewers have stated that it could be a craft of some nature and there's beings on board but we have to take that information and combine it with what we have as well we can't just purely rely on the remote viewers although i do believe that remote viewing is very very powerful and a successful tool you can check out online lots of remote viewers uh future forecasting is one of them i believe and just have a look at what they're saying about it and make your own mind up so the european space agency didn't release the images when it actually got into i think it was early early october mid-october when they actually got to Mars, or it was passing Mars, its closest point, the European Space Agency didn't release the images, all the images, of what was, what was being seen. So we've only got a selected few. And I must say, they're pretty rubbish, the photographs. I'm not expecting a close-up of, of this rock, a real extreme close-up, but they're pretty flaky. You know, and considering all the money and technology that's gone into space and space travel and space observation and all the telescopes we've got up there as well, you would think there would be some more detailed imagery. And the way I feel about it is there is. And I believe that these agencies, NASA and the ESA and other space agencies around the world are concerned about this. And it's not being dealt with accordingly due to reasons of this could be quite a serious situation. And where Free Eye Atlas is now, it has gone behind the sun. So this is at the moment traveling behind the sun and it's going to reappear in the beginning, I believe, of December around that time. I think it's, I think it's December the 19th around that date. It gets, the clo it gets very close to Earth. So it may actually be visible from that point, which would be amazing if it is. So NASA, ESA are holding back images. And while this is all happening... We are having NASA that are being defunded or they're not having the full funding. They, we've withdrawn certain elements of funding. And this has happened at the exact same time. Free Eye Atlas, an interstellar comet, which is meant to be possibly older than the Earth, has come into our solar system. And whatever people believe on it, it's very, very bizarre. And it is questioning so much of what we know scientifically on this planet. And it has already displayed so many characteristics of not being a comet. But yet NASA, ESA, all the space agencies still wish to say it is a comet. And not going to the level of it being an alien spacecraft, that could be a possibility. Well, who knows? You know, maybe, maybe. Uh, Abby Lowe has talked about that, the Harvard University scientist, professor. He has spoken about this and, and discussed that it could be some sort of alien craft, which is possible. So it was discovered the 1st of July, 2025, and it could have been discovered before. The way NASA aren't telling you this inf other bits of information, who knows? But anyway, that's what we've been given. It's given on the 1st of July was when it was released. And it was discovered, and the reason why it was called Atlas, by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. So Free Eye Atlas is estimated to be, apparently to Google, but I've read that it could be up to 20 kilometers long. And that is five to 10 kilometers a muamua which was the first was it was 400 meters and borosnov was 975 so we kind of see this increase in size and these are all according to google so there is other observations and people have stated other numbers and facts and things and on tiktok and all these platforms but again we have to be very careful with the information that we're listening to because obviously we rely on people like NASA and the ESA to deliver information. And if they're not giving us the correct information, it's creating a huge distortion. And this object's there. So it's not a denying this object, this, this is a fantasy or this reality, it's, it's just some freak idea, but it, it's really there. It's suggesting that from, from all the scans they've done of it, that it's got some sort of central energy system. And 
we're kind of just ruling out the fact of it being uh, a, a spaceship or being some sort of craft, but it could be a craft. And this is something we all need to consider at this time. If, if we think of the stuff that's going on in this planet, and we, we really need to really majorly shift our consciousness, really big time. You know, maybe, maybe this, this, whatever this object is, is coming in to almost like probe our consciousness, you know, wake us up a little more. You know, I do believe aliens are already here, but this could be very beyond, beyond what we actually even could perceive as alien intelligence. And it could be so advanced that well, the way we're seeing it may not be what it actually is. And I think that gets where it gets really interesting because what we're observing and what we feel we're seeing is a rock or, you know, this object floating through, going through space. But actually, this could be actually some sort of spaceship. Now, you know, that's my point of view. Um, and I, I know a lot of other people share that. And I know a lot of people feel that way as well. I'm not saying they're coming here to save us. I'm not saying they're coming here to make, you know, take the evil and the negativity off the planet. No, but just the very fact that this object would come into our consciousness, into our solar system. And if you look at the solar system like a frequency chamber, uh, frequencies of consciousness, that, that's the way I see this 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 universe if you like so when when this object's coming in it's actually testing our consciousness giving us another possible reality giving us another sense of direction but you've had all the major telescopes that have discovered it hubble also the james webb out that's out in space and they, they've all shown it and they've all shown this object but the moment it's got any closer or, or any detail the, the images have sort of failed or the exposure times have not is are not correct or something you know and that raises a lot of suspicion in this age considering how cutting edge our technology is on this planet especially nasa and their advancements in technology so the age estimate of this object is meant to be three to 11 billion years old now you're going to say how did they work that out well they again this is so advanced this technology they have ai systems that can analyze the light and the the interaction of how this light is moving through space so exactly exactly how that's done i i don't really know but somehow they estimate it to be that old and that would make it older than the earth so we have an object passing through our solar system at the at the moment which is older than our earth and suddenly all of a sudden all the telescopes are not functioning correctly or there's a lack of imagery or there's a lack of funding and you know it is crazy i mean really like at uh, the point where we really need to advance in our consciousness we really have to this this planet is stuck we are in a major situation we've been drip fed education and knowledge and we are stuck and this is creating absolute awful stuff on the planet. And I, 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 I feel, I'm not saying these are going to be aliens that are coming to save us, right? So I'm not saying there's a spaceship going to be a flyby rock that's going to, aliens going to jump off and sort the evil out in the world. No. But I do believe the very fact that this has come into our solar system, our frequency chamber, you know, our our, our, our our existence if that just l would appeared in our sky it would be it would create a presence that that would would shake humanity so on the 3rd of october this was 0.19 au from mars right and a, a 1 au astronomical unit in space terms is about 93 million miles which sounds a lot but in space it, that isn't actually much distance really it's not as it's a huge amount of distance to, compared to earth and then we got on october the 29th it came 1.36 au from the sun and on uh november the 3rd it's going to be 0.65 au from venus but interestingly on december the 19th it's going to be 1.8 au from earth but this might actually be visible which will be unbelievable and really quite incredible and I find it interesting as well on the 19th, because obviously that's the time of solstice as well. 
The exact precision of this object is quite amazing. It is flying over. It's also what's really concerned the space agencies, and I, well, they haven't said this, but what I think has really concerned the space agencies is the change in trajectory. So the fact it's changed direction, right? And no comet does this, all right? So we've had, we have comets pass through our uh, solar system all the time. So, you know, we have lots of debris and things flying through space. And some of you may have heard of things called space junk. So this is flying around our, our inner solar system all the time. So at the moment, Free Eye Atlas is on the opposite side of the sun. So we're not actually seeing it. So, and this is going to come round leading up. I, I don't know, I think it's going to be out sort of mid-November and, and it will be back out for observations if it pops back out. But this, if it didn't, I mean, that, that would again rise, raise massive questions. And again, you've got the European Space Agency have loads of missions that they're doing. And uh, one of them is called JUICE. And this is a JUICE apparently is going to observe it, whether or not we get information from that who knows but that's apparently it's going to observe it as it passed by venus so this is going to be it but abby Lowe, the harvard professor has has discussed talked a lot about it you can see a lot of information you probably recognize him if, if you type in his search on on youtube or google and he's pretty certain that it's some sort of alien craft and yeah, you know, he's a very credible guy. So he's he's not like just making this up. He's he. I think he said it was like a sixty percent chance. And then you had, um, I was actually searching around in Google last night and having a look, and Google stated it was thirty to forty percent chance that it was some sort of unknown origin. I mean, it it goes it gets a bit pathetic. I mean, NASA have been sending signals out and space agencies to see if there's some sort of communication with life. And makes sense that where, where we're at now, that maybe, maybe we've called this upon ourselves. And it is something to really look into and understand. I mean, if we did have some sort of alien presence come into this reality and actually interact on a physical level with us, I mean, what would happen to the current system, right? So, I don't think it would work out too well, right? <laughs> Looking around at certain posts, there is a connection to this star, the, the positioning of Free Eye Atlas to some ancient Sumerian star maps. Now, I haven't looked into that in detail, so I haven't seen how true that is. But from what I understand is that, the, you know, the, the, obviously anybody that knows about Sumerians, they, are, they were the ones that mapped the stars originally. So they actually mapped out the whole constellations, the whole star maps for everything. And they also followed comets, spoke about comets and all this stuff. There is some really interesting imagery when you start looking. And, and is this connected to the Sumerians? Is this some sort of ancient technology that's passing through our skies? giving us an insight that we've never seen before to awake our consciousness, to give us a, to, 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 to make us expand. We need to expand as a human race, we have to. And we're getting so stuck and let, pulled down by these lower vibrations of what this reality is. Monetary system is, is, is really having a really stronghold over humanity. And obviously money is vital, don't get me wrong, money is very important, but when it controls you, when money controls your, you as a, a, a spirit, that's a very dangerous situation. The system, that's a, if you don't know already, is very close to resetting because it has to reset. There's no other way the system can survive. So Free Eye Atlas could be some sort of connection to that as well. So, and, and, and that's what I believe is, as my theory, I believe that this is no matter what it is, whether or not it's a spacecraft or it is just a comet, which is definitely not a comet, but if, if it is some sort of other intelligence, it is to awake our consciousness, you know, and we have to awake there, we have to go there. In the ancient times, people saw comets as not, not positive, you know, they saw them as ways of uh, massive shift and changes, and it often was connected to negative, uh, negative outcomes when, when a comet was seen and created a lot of fear. So uh, it, this is a time to really be within yourself, right? So whatever's gonna happen in the next five years, something unknown could happen very, very quickly and, and could change the course of humanity very quickly. 
And I feel that we are at that point. And I feel a lot of people feel the same as well. You know, the 2020 period was just the start, really, of, of our awakening of our consciousness, whether good or bad. I know terrible times, really horrible. But that was an awakening. That was the start of this, really. And we need to expand our consciousness. And that's what's happening. It doesn't always mean when you understand dark and light, it doesn't always mean it's going to be done in a good way, in a beautiful way. Sometimes that change can be very intense. And it's okay. As, as Mr. Hicks always said, this is just a ride because it is. This is just a, a spirit in a physical body and we're passing through and we're having this experience. But it's so real, these things going on. It's so crazy. It's so intense. But it's all right. Everything's fine. You're going you're gonna to move forward and move on. But it's, it's embracing the unknown. I think this is where we're at and really bringing that sort of new information into the human existence because we've become stagnant we've become still trapped in our own belief systems we're kind of shutting things down science has become limited into what we are it, it there is more so thank you for watching everybody and please subscribe if you haven't you can also join the member section where there's lots of extra content and exclusive content just for that section uh but yeah the, the final thoughts i just feel we are at this point, we need to expand and I feel we are going to have a lot more things happen in the coming years as well. I think the next five years is going to blow people's minds and including myself. So, you know, this is just the start, I believe, for AI Atlas and I think the, there's going to be a lot more strange situations coming. And yes, we do... I believe already have aliens on this planet living amongst us, but just because they're another, there's lots of different alien races. Believe me, there are many, not just on this planet, but off planet as well. And this interstellar object is, 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 is very peculiar for them as well. There's lots of different alien agendas going on around this planet. And when you look into them, you will start to realize that there is many, many races on this planet and they've been here for many, many years. So thank you for watching, everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join the members section, which has lots of extra content on. And until the next video, I will see you then.